Hello everyone, happy Friday and welcome to a lunchtime chat. I'm going to be talking today about uh, my Kenta quilt that I've been working on um, and a couple other exciting things. Hello! Um, but uh, you may have noticed that there haven't been videos for a couple of weeks because COVID finally caught me. Um, I managed to avoid getting it for this long, two and a half years, but um, it somehow finally got me. Hello! Um, and even though, you know, just like everybody else, I'm vaxxed and boosted and all that good stuff, wear my mask all over the place. Uh, but as my friend who's a doctor around here said, we're all basically just breathing COVID air right now. Um, so I uh, got pretty sick for a couple days. Thankfully, I was able to get the Paxlovid uh, on Sunday. And within like 90 minutes of that first dose, um, I started feeling better. Uh, that stuff is amazing and I'm really, really thankful that um, it's around and more widely available and that I was able to take it. Um, but COVID's parting gift to me was that it took my sense of smell. Um, so I can't smell anything and I can't begin to tell you how weird that is. Um, I'm sure some of you have experienced it, um, but you know, I've heard people talk about it for a couple of years now and always thought, wow, that would be really bad. Um, but it literally disappeared within like a couple of hours. I was smelling fine and then all of a sudden it's just gone. Um, can't smell a thing. Um, I've always had a super sensitive sense of smell uh, so and because I think my eyes are so bad that I've always my sense of smell is just really really heightened and I do a lot of things um, the way that I cook the way that I just kind of navigate the world is by my sense of smell so not having it uh, is very strange I uh, have been like sticking my nose in Clorox bottles <laughs> trying to smell anything um, and it's it's not happening so hopefully everybody keeps telling me that um, it could come back um, you know hopefully fairly soon uh, tomorrow is it's crazy I couldn't smell the campfire and it was insane it is like it messes with your head because you you know there should be a smell there <laughs> you know it and and it's just not there it is it is the absolute weirdest thing um, ever so I, I feel you it is very very insane so that's where I've been um, <laughs> I've mostly been in bed for the last week but um, tomorrow is uh, is day 10 so the studio will be open again um, next week I obviously canceled all shopping appointments and um, in-person pickups this week um, but I'm, I'm doing a lot better and uh, next week uh, we should be open again for um, appointments and um, all that good stuff and next week marks the one year anniversary since we moved into the studio space which is super exciting um, and we're doing a one year celebration so next week uh, be sure to check your newsletters uh, uh, Wednesday morning ish to be the first to learn about uh, the celebration sale that is going to be happening next week um, so that's going to go out Wednesday and then we are having a um, weekend long open studio. So we'll be open next Saturday the 16th and Sunday the 17th. Um, Saturday from 10 to five, <clears throat> Sunday from 12 to three. Um, and during the open studio, we're gonna be doing all sorts of fun stuff. Um, we're gonna be having some raffles and giveaways. Um, a local bakery uh, is making little snuggly monkey cookies that are really adorable. Um, so those will be given out uh, while supplies last kind of thing um, yeah and all sorts of other fun little things so so that's what's that's what's coming up next week um, some fun stuff that we'll be having to give away um, next week I for the spring I usually include packets of seeds with your orders as a little thank you um, and I'm down to my last few packets of seeds so uh, we have some new stickers that will now be going out um, with your orders from here on out. So we've got a new Snuggly Monkey logo sticker. We have the scissors, Creativity Awaits, um, and the other sticker that we had before. So you'll find one of those in your orders coming up. Um, okay, so 
let's talk about the panther quilt. Um, I'm going to try to talk for as long as I can. I've got hot tea here. Um, and if I can make it, I do have a box to open that I'll open towards the end. But I haven't really been doing a lot of talking because I tend to have coughing fits. So um, I will try to go as long as I can here. So my Cantha quilt. Um, I am have been doing the Allison Glass Cantha stitch along. Um, I love, love, love the way that she structured this stitch along because she provided all of the instructions and <laughs> the materials, I think it was, I don't know, back starting in like March or April maybe, but then she's kind of letting it run until August to let everybody stitch at their own pace, which to me is the whole purpose of hand stitching, right? Is to do it at your own pace, the way that you like it and not feel rushed to join in. So even though I'm kind of, some folks have already finished their, uh, their Cantha quilts and I'm just kind of getting started with mine, I still feel like I'm a part of the stitch along, which is just fun, which is great. <clears throat> so um, if you've been following along, I um, had been working on sewing together my quilt top and um, I just finished basting the layers together. So it is finally now portable. Um, this is my Cantha project bag. This is a bag that I made years and years ago um, based on an Elizabeth Hartman pattern. I actually I don't think that she sells it anymore, unfortunately, because it's a really great pattern. And I've used this bag for a very, very long time um, as one of my travel project bags, but quilt and everything fits in here. So let's, I wanted to um, show you guys. We love it, thank you. Um, first, we'll take a look at my quilt and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, the supplies that I'm using, what I have found to be kind of the easier um, way to Get through this stitching. So for my fabrics, I went with, I made it easy for myself and I went with um, one of Allison's kits that she was offering. Um, hey Sue, how are you? Um, so she had these uh, kits available. Her shop is closed now, I think, already because she's moving up to Massachusetts. Um, so I, I, I think her shop just closed, but when she reopens, um, she might have some of these kits left um, in her shop. So I bought one of her kits. It came already cut into the two and a half inch strips that I needed. Um, and then I just kind of round, I'm a huge Allison Glass fan. I have a lot of her fabric. Um, so I took the kit that she sent me and then I used some of the stuff that's in my um, stash at home in order to round it out and to get the full color gradient that I wanted. Um, for the back, again, I used some Allison Glass from my stash, um, a couple of her handcrafted, big handcrafted pieces, and then the very last bits of the art gallery circle that I had left um, is here in the center. So that's kind of a big, what my quilt looks like um, <clears throat> the long view and the so now the hand stitching um, I've never done Cantha style stitching before this is all brand new to me um, Allison has done a great great job with all of the instructions um, and how to do this she's made it really accessible um, the the Cantha journal to get like the full which I think in the end ended up being like 60 or something. It's huge, it's a lot of pages. Um, but she's got the videos on how to do this on her Instagram actually. So um, head over there and check that out if you're interested in learning some more about this um, from Allison. So basically, this is different. Beautiful, love the color gradient. Thank you, um, I, I love it too. It was. A lot of fun to do. I really enjoy playing with color uh, quite a bit. So um, basically how this works is that there's no batting in here. So there's the quilt top and then you've got your backing. You put them together, um, you very loosely uh, safety pin base them on a big table and then you put in the long cantha basting stitches. These are, the, they're not basting stitches, they're gonna those are the stitches that hold the quilt together, but kind of every three strips, 
Um, you do that while it's laid out on the table um, and the backing is taped down so that everything stays in place. Once you have um, the whole thing, every three rows, based it out, you can then take it off the table because now it's pretty um, secure and nothing's really gonna, the fabric's gonna stay uh, where I want it to stay. It shouldn't really um, bunch up in the back. And now I can take this with me and stitch wherever I want to stitch. So what have I been using to stitch? Um, I'm using this adorable little kitty cat um, storage box to keep all my supplies in. Um, these are, they. I think they were originally intended to hold like six and a half inch quilt blocks, um, but I have them in the shop because I thought they made a really great size for, um, for carrying threads and supplies around, which it does. Um, and so in here fits the balls of Wonderful Pearl Cotton fit in here. Um, I'm using, there's nine colors in here, but I'm actually not using this one anymore. So I'm using eight of the um, Alice in Glass Wonderfill colors. Is it a running stitch? Yes, it, it is like a running stitch, um, basically. Um, to, that's basically what it is to get uh, all the way across. Um, so the eight colors that I'm using are 126, I'm sorry, 2126, 2131, 2103, 2105, 2110, 2116, and 2118. This is size 8 pearl. Um, and I, I thought about using Sashi Go Thread for this, um, but in the end, I really wanted to use these colors so because they coordinate so well with her fabric um, so I ended up sticking with the pearl cotton instead of sashiko and um, and I'm kind of glad that I did because the pearl cotton um, if you've worked with the two pearl cotton has a sheen to it making giving it that really beautiful vibrant um, slightly glossy color when you stitch with it sashiko does not have a sheen it is a matte finish um, which is great uh, for if you're going for that kind of look. It's great for mending. It um, as you're stitching through, like say you're mending some jeans or something, Sashiko thread will stay put uh, where you want it because it doesn't have any kind of slickness to it. Um, so for that, it's great. And Sashiko thread, I know several people that are using it for hand quilting and are loving it. Um, but I'm I'm really enjoying the pearl cotton here. Um, it glides through the fabric really easily. Um, it doesn't knot up. It doesn't fray. Um, and I have mentioned this a couple of times before, um, but I've pretty much decided that I'm going to no longer stock the Finca pearl cotton, um, and instead I'm going to get a cabinet of Wonderfill and stock Wonderfill um, Pearl Cotton instead. Um, it, the, if you've used Finca for years, I did too. Unfortunately, it's become really, really hard to get. Um, it's, that's why so many of my uh, Pearl Cotton color sets have been out of stock for so long, because I just can't um, get a lot of their colors anymore. And also the quality of it has become really inconsistent. Um, some balls will be like significantly fluffier and bigger in certain colors than other ones. So I'm just, I just haven't been thrilled um, with Finca the last couple of years, but I am really, really happy with Wonderfill and working with Wonderfill um, in embroidery, in uh, hand stitching. So hopefully you guys like it too. Um, and that's a change that will be coming up um, in the next couple of months. So I've got my pearl cotton. Um, I took Allison's advice because you, the way that you stitch these, do you use three stand, strands or the total six? So pearl cotton is single stranded. It's not um, divisible the way that embroidery floss is. So I'm using a single strand of size eight pearl cotton. Um, I think it would be really tough to do this with embroidery floss um, because it, as you're similar to why it's so, you really shouldn't use embroidery floss for sashiko either um, because when you're running a thread through fabric and these long stitches 
the um, embroidery floss will have a tendency to fray and split up. So you want to use something that's been twisted into a single strand um, and isn't going to give you that fraying, fraying issue. Um, so when you're doing this, you are stitching um, from the center and you're stitching all the way across um, the width of your quilt. So Allison has suggested that you cut a one single piece of pearl cotton that is enormously long, um, that is a little bit wider than the width of your, of your quilt and then um, you use that to stitch it through, as she had also suggested that you kind of cut several strands so that you have them ready to go, which is what I've done here. Um, I am using the Bowen Milliner size one needles for stitching. Again, I started with a Sashigo needle, um, but it was a little bit too thick. Um, and the, so if you've never worked with a milliner before, milliner needles, have, um, they're very long, they're very, they have kind of a thicker body shaft, uh, they're sharp tipped, but what makes them so special is that the eye is the same size as the body of the needle. So as you are pushing your needle through the fabric, it's like pushing a single, you don't have the little boop that happens when you get to the eye of most other needles when you're trying to pop it through um, your fabric. So. The milliners actually ended up working better for me for this particular thing um, for this the instead of the sashigo needles. So I switched over. Um, I've talked about Bowen needles before. <coughs> and they are um, my favorites because they are very strong um, and they don't they don't bend. I tend to hold my needles really tight. I tend to bend needles very easily. Um, and I find with the Bowens that they don't bend. So I, these are really kind of my favorite needles all across the board. Um, they are what I'm including in the limited edition embroidery kits. I'm a, I'm a big fan of these. So this is the needle that I'm using. Um, and then thimbles. So I have not been a huge thimble person my whole life. Size, yes. Um, the milliners are the size ones, which is the um, longest ones that they have. Um, but so thimbles, I like, I have not been a huge thimble user in my stitching life. Um, I've never been able to figure out how to use a traditional tailor's thimble. Um, they just tend to feel clunky to me and kind of get in my way. But with this kind of stitching, um, and how much, uh, hand power it takes and the way you're maneuvering the needle, it was killing my fingers. Um, and I have like little divots <laughs> on my finger from trying to get the, the needle through. So what I ended up doing is I'm using the Little House rubber thimbles or rubber grippers um, on my thumb and my forefinger. And then um, I yesterday when I was basting this on my cutting table, um, I had these these are little they're called thimble pads and they are these little suede buttons um, they're super duper sticky I have taken this one on and off many many times and it still resticks over and over again um, and what it does is it protects the pad of your finger so that you can use this to push your needle through and not poke a hole in your finger um, so this is kind of the combination that I was using when I had the quilt laid out on the table um, and I could kind of pick it up into my hands to, to maneuver it through. And this worked really, really well. Um, once I picked it up off the table and I started stitching uh, kind of in my hands and I could scrunch up the fabric, then um, I've added the clover knuckle thimble and I just normally, the way that you, this is a sashiko thimble and you normally use it um, this way so that you can use your knuckle to kind of do the sashiko stitching. Um, but what I've done is I'm turning it the other way around. And this way, uh, when I have it in my hand, I can use this to push the needle through and then I grip the needle um, with the grippers and it pulls right out. So this is kind of the thimble combination, and in a couple of minutes, I will turn the camera around um, and do a little bit of stitching to show you um, how I'm using all of this. 
My arthritic fingers love the rubber grippers, can't stitch without them. I totally agree, Sue. So these rubber, these are probably one of the best selling items in the entire shop. Um, if you're familiar with Heidi Parks, she absolutely loves these and talks about them all the time. She has sent lots and lots of folks my way, which I'm very grateful for. Um, there are several different kinds of these little rubber gripper things. Um, there's the Little House ones, which is what I have on right now. There are these ever sewn needle pullers, and then Clover has a set as well. The positive of the ever sewn and the Clover sets is that you get two different size uh, grips in this, in each pack. Um, so you get one that would be kind of larger for your thumb and a slightly smaller one that you can use on your index finger. Same with these. Um, the downsize is that if you have slightly fluffier hands like mine, um, the these are just a tiny bit tight. I can't get these on my finger. These are way too small um, for my fingers. So if you have small hands, uh, these might work really well for you. But if you have slightly larger hands, um, the Little House ones are fantastic. And the Little House ones do come, they come in three different sizes. They come in the small, the mediums are the pink ones, and the large are the blue ones. If you're here in the studio, um, the packaging is very clever because that's what this hole here is for, is for you to stick your finger through um, and it tells you which size fits your finger. Um, but obviously, if you're purchasing online and can't stick your finger through the packaging, um, for me, the large fits perfectly on my thumb. It is a little bit loose, see how it came off really easily, on my uh, pointer finger, but I kind of prefer that because um, if it's too tight, then it, for me it just feels too uncomfortable. Um, so ideally, I could probably use a large on my thumb and a medium on my pointer finger. Uh, but I like the large combo. Um, the vast majority of people, medium is definitely the one that I sell the most of. And the small, if you have really, really tiny hands or for children, um, the small is, is fantastic. They are, they are quite small. Remember that these are Japanese. So this is Japanese sizing, uh, which tends to be a bit smaller than what we have here in the U.S. Um, so why do I like these more than the other kinds? A uh, couple different reasons. The, um, these in particular, these are more budget friendly. Um, I think they're running about $3, 350 something like that right now. Um, but the material that is used is just a little bit thinner than the one that Little House uses. So, um, these are not going to last you as long. It's more likely that these are going to rip uh, more easily down the road. Um, none of these are made with super thick rubber, which you probably don't want because then you kind of lose the finesse of being able to control your needle. Um, but so these are a little bit thinner and a little easier to rip. These are a little bit thicker, but still thin enough that I have total control of my needle. Um, I've tried using like the um, the beige ones that you can get that like money counters use um, that you can get like off of supply stores and stuff. I don't like those. They, that rubber is way too thick and then I can't feel the needle. It feels kind of fumbly on my fingers. So this to me, the little house is kind of like the perfect middle ground in terms of um, the thickness of the of the silicone that's used for these. The other thing that makes these, I think, superior to the other ones is if you can see all those little bumps that are on there, makes it super duper grippy and really easy to pull your needle out. Um, the Eversone one has those little bumps as well, but they're not as many um, and they are a slightly different size, I think. Um, so I find these little bumps to just be a lot easier to work with and to use. Um, so I am a big fan of the Little House uh, grippers. 
Um, my fingers do get a little hot and sweaty in there after a while, but I kind of see that as that's a good reminder for me to take a break from stitching for a little bit, because if not, I will tend to stitch for hours and hours on end, which is not great for my back. So um, <clears throat> my favorite too. Excellent, Robin. Yes, a lot of folks have really come to love the, um, the little house uh, grippers. Um, so, so yeah, so that's what I'm using. Um, let's see, let's find my needle, which is over here. Um, and I am going to try um, switching you guys over to an overhead view so that I can do a little bit of stitching and show you um, how I am using all of this stuff. So let me get myself situated here. Um, Okay, so here we are, um, and hopefully right now um, it might be a little hard to see uh, the thread because I'm using the pink thread um, on a very, very pink <laughs> row, uh, so it's, it's a little hard to see. Um, sorry, my threads are all tangled up here. All right, so like I said, I start um, stitching in the middle of the quilt and go out to the edges. Ah, I did a good job of getting this really tangled up here. All right, I'm actually going in the other direction right now. So <clears throat> I am keeping a one of my button needle minders on here. One, it gives me a place to rest my needle, um, but it's also helping me mark center. So I can, it moves, um, the magnets are strong enough that it can move up and down as I stitch the different rows but um, it, it stays here on the center line so that when I'm starting, I know where to put my first couple of stitches in. All right, so you start from the center, and like I said, you're working your way out uh, to the edges, and these are really long pieces of thread. Um, once you get started, they don't, they do, tend not to get too tangled up. But <clears throat> basically, I am just kind of using my fingers, pushing through. Once I start getting a little stuck, that's when I give it a push with uh, that one there. Um, and then if I'm done, you can also give it a good push with the knuckle thimble. The grippers help me grab onto the end there and I pull through. Um, it's really quick and easy to do. Um, it's not as precise um, as Sashiko, so it's actually going a lot faster. Um, it's taking me a little while to get used to not doing such tiny stitches the way that I normally do um, with Sashiko. Um, and I have tried using the palm thimble um, but that, for some reason, feels a little unwieldy. This feels a little bit more natural um, and comfortable for me. And there you go. That's pretty much uh, what I'm doing. And so you just kind of keep doing that uh, until you get to the end. All right. Like I said, I've got my needle minder there so I can throw my needle um, on there when I'm done. And this is, so far, this has really been a very enjoyable um, project all the way around. I, um, I enjoyed, I haven't made a quilt in years, 
um, so I hadn't really used my sewing machine in a very long time um, so that was a lot of fun to kind of get back to my machine um, and then uh, and of course the hand stitching is, is my absolute favorite so um, I'm having a lot of fun with this and I will definitely keep posting uh, more and more project photos as I uh, <laughs> keep going and keep stitching um, if you guys have any questions if anybody else out there is working on the stitch along and you have any other tips and tricks that you um, have come across please please feel free to share um, like I said this is a whole new process to me as well uh, so I am I'm really really enjoying it uh, how does it get finished and binding so that is um, that is super cool the way that uh, again go take a look at Allison's Instagram because um, she does a really great video on how uh, she does it but it's all uh, bound by hand with a whip stitch um, so you take your once you're done you have to go through and tie um, all the knots of the thread ends and then um, you take your edges and fold them in a quarter of an inch um, and then you whip stitch it in one direction and whip stitch it in another direction and it gives you this very cool kind of crossed uh, border look so um, go over Allison's got lots of pictures of her own finished quilt and um, so you can see what I'm talking about um, I have never finished a quilt that way before so um, I'm really looking forward to, to something new and to trying that um, I also think that'll be I'm excited to try it and I think I'm probably gonna try it first on a sashiko sampler because I think that might be um, late to the party Allison who Allison Glass uh, she is the fabric designer uh, that designed all the fabric that I'm using and she's the one that is hosting the Kanta um, stitch along <clears throat> and her Instagram is just Allison Glass um, is at Allison Glass I think it's one L um, but speaking of Allison <laughs> um, the one box that I have here to open today is actually uh, from her, um, and it is a restock of um, her pearl cottons. You're very welcome. So, um, as I said, Allison is in the process of moving um, up to Massachusetts, so her shop is closed for, um, I think, about a month or so. The voice is going. Um, but that's what's in this box is loads and loads of beautiful, um, <clears throat> wonderful pearl cotton to refill, uh, to refill the cabinet that is kind of hiding out back over there um, of all of Allison's uh, wonderful thread. And then there's a couple other little goodies in here. There is. There's some of her needle minders. This is the um, flower, rainbow flower needle minder. And thanks, Claudia, just when I need another rabbit hole. It is another rabbit hole, my friend. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then these are her, uh, this is what, this is the fabric that's on the back of my Cantha quilt. This is her um, art theory, the sticker, the vinyl sticker of that beautiful, beautiful center, um, center piece. So, I think that's all that's in here is just lots and lots of pearl cotton um, to restock that cabinet and hopefully tide us over until she's got her shop open again. Um, so there you go. That is, uh, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm working on right now is, uh, is that quilt. Um, I'm finishing up. I just have a couple more French knots to go and I'm almost done with my Baco Productions uh, Floral Rainbow, which was the first limited edition kit. Um, the second one, we are hard at work on putting the kits together, um, and they look so beautiful. I'm re I haven't the this one that's coming up. Um, it's looking like we'll be able to release it towards the last week of July. Um, I haven't stitched this one before, uh, so I'm very very excited to stitch this one up. Um, the kit's got 25 colors in it of Cosmo floss. Uh, so it's taking us a little bit longer to get all of that cut and carded um, but yeah looking forward to that one um, and then we even have the 
fall one for September um, is already in the works and that one is super cute. Um, so lots of exciting, uh, the limited edition kits are coming. Um, yeah, and I kind of hinted yesterday at something else that I've got my um, helpers working on right now that should be ready to release next early next week, I think. Um, folks have been asking for a long time, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. So keep an eye out for, um, for that coming hopefully Monday or Tuesday. All right, my friends, my voice is tired, um, and I, I so I'm going to wrap this up. But I hope you're all uh, doing well. Stay healthy. Be careful out there. Um, I did not think I, I think I thought that um, COVID was just going to be kind of a bad cough. Um, but I, I wasn't expecting to feel quite so poorly as I have. Um, but I'm thankful that I'm on the mend and feeling much, much better. I'm hopeful that I will be able to smell things again <laughs> in the not too distant future. Um, thank you, Robin. Such a fun project. Thank you. And please take care of you. Thank you. Um, I am trying. I am trying. It's very hard for me to sit still, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm trying very hard. So uh, I will see you all again soon. Uh, I hope this was helpful and let me know if you have any other questions, anything else I can answer for you. Um, thank you all so much for um, your feel better wishes. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, okay, and that's all. I will talk to you guys again soon. Take care. Um, thank you. I promise I won't overdo it. <laughs> My mom's telling me the same thing every day. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, folks. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.